In this edition of Muskoka Central TV, we're going to build an ITLA York Industries HO kit. Hey Joe, where do you think we should put this kit? Oh, right there on the corner. Good idea. Right between that little structure there and this other ITLA Allstate kit. So that corner is a 45 degree angle. It's a good thing that the ITLA kits can be uh, configured in any different config, um, shape that you like. So we could do a flat, like the Allstate kit here, or we can configure the walls like I've done for Advantic Packaging Industry here with their industrial wall kits. So all these sections are contained in the kit. It has you know, very good color instructions showing you many different configurations that you can do. And so I'm just completing the assembly here. I've already modeled the individual sections um, individually, painted them. I use a multitude of different paints. The Rust-Oleum uh, Camouflage Beige is my base color for all of my concrete work. Um, I then do color the brickwork with just simple acrylic paint, paints. I have a uh, brick red and sometimes I mix in a dark brown and just mix those together. Um, I find the red is a little bit too bright so I'm mixing some brown and then it's just uh, the uh, brick mortar mix from Roberts I do uh, wipe that over to get the uh, mortar colored and then uh, a multitude of um, AK or MIG uh, weathering um, paints to just create the uh, old look. So uh, over the concrete I mainly use this tan for yellow green uh, filter. It's a very light wash that uh, creates that look and I'll also mix in some pigment uh, concrete color. It's lighter colored uh, powder and uh, just mix that in when it's wet uh, just to create the different effects. And um, and a little bit of uh, streaking, uh, streaking grime or gray uh, over top of the blocks as well. Here the kit contains these uh, long pieces, which can be built up in layers for the top cornice, and also a multitude of these uh, thinner pieces which I've painted all these separately, of course, and uh, I've cut these down just a little bit uh, to go over top of all the seams uh, for the uh, wall sections. So as you see, the ITLA has the, um, uh, I don't want to call that dado cuts so that uh, the wall sections fit together nice and square and uh, very strong when you do them. So you could either do them flat or in a 90 degree configuration. And so I'm gonna do the ones flat here. I like to use for my laser kits, um, either Elmer's Extreme White Glue, which is a, it's similar to Elmer's regular white glue, but it's a little bit thicker and it sets up a little bit faster, um, or the expert uh, laser cut uh, faller uh, glue which has a very fine applicator and this is also um, like a white glue that sets up very very uh, quickly and you can see the fine uh, fine line that you can get uh, with this applicator I'll just do that along here you can see how fine that is uh, but for these wall sections we don't need it to be so fine I use that on the windows a lot um, we can use the Elmer's applicator here. Just, just putting that in the seams. Just going to 
push those together and put some down the seam here. I just line that up with the I can see where the gap is in the in the wall section and line it up at the top. I got it about, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch over from the gap so that it's kind of right in the middle of the seam. And let's press that down. And I don't want the big globs of glue in there, so I'll just take something metal and Wipe up that glue a little bit. Stop working there. The Selmer's glue dries really clear, so don't have to worry too much about cleaning it up. That section to my paper a little bit, but do this section. So here we're going to install some of the signs that come in the kit. Uh, it, they're just on regular white paper um, so I'm here I'm just spreading some of the white glue on the back of the sign which I cut out and just burnishing that in place with my finger the York Industries kit uh, sign comes in the kit as well as that Coca-Cola sign and there's a few other signs too that you have a choice of and here is the frame. It's a laser cut piece, part of the kit. Comes out in um, already in a rectangular configuration. You don't have to do any assembly with that. Beauty of using the white glue is that it dries clear and not glossy. Unlike if you were doing a plastic kit, you have to be very careful with the um, glue. Here I'm using a burnishing brush, or it's a distressing brush. Uh, at first I grabbed uh, the wire one, which is shown in the, in the bottom one in this picture, distressing tool. Um, it was a little bit aggressive, I think, for this purpose. I didn't like it. Uh, it was sort of scratching the sign a little too much. Um, so I changed to the uh, fiberglass one here in a second. The fiberglass one was a little better. It took off some of the ink and made it look a little more faded as opposed to scratching the sign itself. Here's a little close-up. You can see how it just sort of took off uh, some of the ink and made it look faded. Now I've grabbed some uh, rust streaking um, from MIG. Uh, it's enamel wash. I had to put that on. We put it on in a quite thick, you'll see a, a large streak below the vent here. With all the washes you put them on fairly thick um, and then you use the white spirits um, or thinner and um, see I'm just wiping off some of the thinner off my brush and streaking down the um, the wash that I put on and it's still a little too dark so I'm taking a paper towel here and, and just cleaning off some of it still a little bright and dark when it's wet but uh, it is uh, an enamel based product so it's going to dry 
clear and um, be a little less noticeable. Now I'm taking some dust and dirt deposit uh, wash. It's another MIG wash and just uh, putting that all over the model itself. Again, just kind of putting it on thick or uh, almost almost dry brushing in this at this stage. I put it a little thicker on the signs. You'll see. And once again, I've dipped the brush in the white spirits and, and kind of dragging the wash down over the sign. Sorry about the hand in the picture there. It's a bad uh, camera angle. So here's the model as it now stands. You can see I've added a lot of the details that come in the kit. Um, this uh, canopy and the, and the railings and the stairs. Um, the signage has all been added. I've also uh, put on a couple uh, floodlights, uh, which are here and here over top of some of the doorways. I'm not sure how those are going to look when I turn them on. It's something new that I'm trying. Um, and uh, I've replaced the dock door with a, a titchy door here because I used the stock door uh, in this location which I cut down at ground level. Uh, that was not in the kit. Um, so just some small modifications uh, that I've made. You can see I've added uh, some putty it's the AK modeling uh, gray putty. Um, Tamiya also makes a, a similar putty. Um, this happens to be the one I have on hand now. And I've just filled in some of the gaps and areas here and I just have to uh, sand those now. Now what comes in the kit um, along with these pieces which go on the corners, it's all these pieces, which are still in the sprue. Um, it also has a piece which goes along the top of the wall. Uh, remember there was uh, three pieces stacked here, a very thin one, a, a middle one which was a number two, and I believe this one was like a, a C3 in the kit. So those three are stacked. And then you can see the various layers on the top of the wall. So they give you this piece um, that goes along the top. So then I've uh, filled in with the putty, as I mentioned. And the, the na last uh, step is to, I'm just going to sand this putty smooth. And then I'm going to repaint and, and do some touch-ups. Um, I used, I, I like to use this uh, aged concrete from Polyscale. I, I understand these are, may not be in production anymore, but this is a very good match for the Rust-Oleum camo uh, color. So I like to do the touch-ups with this and then blend it in with some weathering and uh, make it look uh, like the original you know, colors that I did uh, for the base. So look at the back of the model. You can see the bracing that was used. So basically I was just using some pieces of a sprue to brace the um, wall sections together. I also used a little bit of sprue around the dock door just to uh, fill the gaps and, and uh, mount that flush with the uh, wall sections. The windows, just basically a piece of uh, clear 
Lexan that uh, is included in the kits. That's just glued on the back of the windows. Uh, it's very easy to install the ITLA windows. Over here I've just used some masking tape and some uh, thicker sections of the little plywood pieces in order to cover up some of the windows. Make it look like curtains or shades. And this is just more bracing down here at this section. Uh, on the base I've just doubled up the thickness of the base um, to mount the walls against and I just glued it to the base. And then the roof section I just painted with craft paint some uh, black and weathered a little bit with the pan pastels, the gray pan pastels. Uh, this chimney is included in the kit and so is this uh, vent assembly that's just a couple layers of the hardwood material doubled up glued together and I just painted it and weathered it. Then for the weathering um, I use some enamel washes uh, this dust and dirt deposits AK4063 is my uh, main one for dirt color it's a bit of a thicker wash so I don't use that everywhere um, but I do like this one this is a MIG uh, MIG 1507 which is a tan for yellow green it's a filter so it's a very thin wash um, but you can see the coloring of it is very close to the concrete color that I'm using so um, that's very good for adding a bit of variation to the concrete and I also like this uh, this filter it's AK076 which is filter for NATO tanks which is more of a dirt color um, so I use that uh, on a lot of the the surfaces um, to just give that weathered look and of, of course you can't forget once you put it on it's going to look uh, pretty blotchy um, you use the the white spirits either the AK or I have the MIG one which is the enamel odorless thinner which is the same as white spirits um, you use that to uh, dilute it and wash the the blotches off and just leave the dirty look on top um, I also use some other pan pastels this uh, this one is gray, neutral gray uh, which is good to give a give the concrete a little bit more gray or I also used it on the roof structure the, if uh, the roof was just painted with uh, dark slate gray uh, craft paint and then I used some pan pastels both the neutral gray and the neutral gray extra dark um, on on the roof itself um, these are pretty good as uh, you can use them on the blocks as well to darken those a little bit so that's most of the products I used I think that's pretty much everything and at the end I just sealed it all with a uh, dull coat um, to seal in all the colors so I did uh, of course I, I haven't mentioned but uh, there's a bit of um, rust colors that I used washes on on this canopy and on some of the ductwork so. so that's pretty much it Joe is it approved it's approved thanks Joe and let's take a one final look at the model